What's so, up? if there is another ferry in the area, uh -huh. this one, the number of the number two, would you be able to know if there's one by 34th? Yeah, so the ferry, yeah, the ferry is right, right there, there? As, you, as you walk up. Yep. Oh, so it's, it's actually no, parked here now? Um, well, I think they come and go. I'm not sure if, if I get to exactly How do, If I second. walk straight down, I'll get it? Or yeah, I have to go it, through here? No, you can walk straight down. No, they expand at the park. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Have a good day. Bye. Hey guys, it's going to be a short stream, I pretty much just got off of work and I have a couple moments, maybe like an hour, an hour and a half to kill before I have to go back to the office. So um, yeah, we'll check out the city during the day. We are currently in Stytown, which is right in the 20s, right on the East River. So allow us a couple moments and we will get started. Hey, Dan Sang, what's up? <clears throat> Let me put the microphone in. team I actually forgot the microphone that's all right because it's gonna be a short stream but I want to welcome everybody to the East River it's actually really beautiful it's quite nice out today it's very chilly I'd say it's in the upper 50s there's a slight breeze coming off the water and in the distance you could see the 59th Street Bridge and of course right in front of us right there you have the very famous One Vanderbilt building. But if you direct your attention just to the right of One Vanderbilt, you could see Central Park Tower. And as we know, this building right here is 432 Park Avenue. It's kind of interesting to see it from this perspective, right? If you remember oftentimes from our live streams, particularly at night, when we do our uh, main show, we actually start live streaming literally right in front of that building. So now that we're a little bit further down on the east side of Manhattan by Stytown, usually we don't have the opportunity to come down here quite often, but since it's during the day, I had a couple hours off in the middle of my day, I thought I would uh, show you around. Hey Jones, Tom, you're gonna stream tonight as well? We will. We will be streaming tonight. It's gonna be an action-packed uh, an information-packed live stream tonight. We're going to be talking about 
uh, Tesla's earnings they reported yesterday. And we are also going to be talking about existing home sales that came out today. Now this is a new floodgate that they're building. Isn't this kind of interesting? So this is one of the neighborhoods that floods a lot here in Manhattan. And they are building literally, I mean quite literally, a flood wall. And we'll get a little bit closer so you can see. It's on this sliding retractor. It almost kind of looks like train tracks, does it not? So God forbid there's an event of a Hurricane Sandy or something like that again, this flood wall will fully retract and it'll stop some of the water coming in to the island of Manhattan. It's kind of crazy, right? Now they're doing this East River Park really, really nicely. You can tell a lot of it is already brand new. You have park benches, you have pretty much everything you could imagine. They made it really nice. Just two years ago, none of this was here. It's still in construction, but it looks quite nice. We'll continue to walk up. We'll check out the rest of the park. But hopefully you all are doing well. Hey, Stacy is here. Says, hey, Tom, and chat bonus live. Yeah, I'm going to try to do these daytime live streams as much as I can. Oftentimes, if I have a client that cancels uh, an appointment or a meeting for a showing or something like that, I'll try to pop on for one or two hours during the day just to give you guys the lay of the land of Manhattan and see what it looks like during the daytime explore some different neighborhoods, talk about some interesting listings that are coming on the market. Hey, Kevin Lanes, what's up? Good to see you. I don't know, what do you guys think about the east side all the way down here by Stytown? I think it's kind of nice, particularly after they opened up this park. We're probably gonna have to turn around. There is no outlet here, but I think it's kind of nice. Wendy England, what's up? Thanks for joining us. Meld is here. Welcome. And you know what? You could just see the spire of the Empire State Building all the way in the distance as well. So pretty good views. I mean, imagine these views at nighttime. You could see one Vanderbilt, the H&M Building, uh, Bank of America Tower, and the Empire State Building. So the views must look incredible. And this is all brand new. So this walking path that we're on now, you can see all the landscaping. This is entirely brand new. And it's going to essentially snake all the way around the island of Manhattan. So this is not yet open, which means we're gonna to to turn around and go back out. But I think it's kind of cool to explore it. Ah, Wendy England says, hey, Tom, I am sitting at home with a head cold. Ah, that sucks. You know, I know a lot of people in the city that are sick. So you got to make sure you crank the vitamin D and vitamin C. It is a little windy and I forgot my microphone, so I do apologize for that. Dan Zhang says, I just saw a person who blew $100,000 in call options on Tesla. Yikes. And yeah, it definitely didn't work out too well. I was quite disappointed by Tesla's earnings. We'll do a deep dive tonight. Uh, Daniel says, the wind sound is relaxing. Well, at least that's good. We're going to turn into the island a little bit and head to the center, which will mitigate some of the wind. But you know, think about it like this. If you live in one of these apartments here, I'll give you one more view of the flood wall. So this is going to be a retractable flood wall. The thing is massive. 
and it's probably about six feet. It's just about as tall as me. So the full elevation is probably 14 feet, right? Judging where the water is right now. Yeah, AK says the wind sound is distracting. Yeah, it kind of is. I forgot the uh, microphone. It was running around like crazy today. Usually on the water. And you have a bike path that goes all the way around too. I mean, think about it like this. You know, if you're gonna move down here, buy an apartment, rent an apartment, a lot of times when you are apartment hunting in the spring and in the summer, you can get a little bit of a skewed perception of what the neighborhood's actually gonna be like. So one of my recommendations is you should always try to view the apartments during the winter time as well, just to get a gauge of what the neighborhood's gonna be like. Cause you know, even though the East River Park is really beautiful, it's cold and windy, even right now. So imagine what it's gonna be like in January and February right there. I mean, 20 mile an hour winds almost every day and freezing. If you like that, that's fine. But I just think you need to know sort of what you're getting yourself into. Hey, Rafed is here. What's up, Rafed? This is a good time for coffee. I may have to get a cup of coffee myself. Now I'm going to commute back to the office. I have about an hour and a half. So I'll take you guys with me, might as well. We're going all the way back to 57th Street. Hey, Andre Almar says, hey Tom, love your daytime live streams. I appreciate it. In Stytown, they have a lot of these really nice courtyards. It's kind of like a park within a park. Now it is private property to the buildings, so we won't sort of snake our way through there, but Hey, running at altitudes is wind, snow, and cold. I would rather be in a warmer climate in the south. Yeah, I mean, everybody has a preference, right? I think running at altitude makes a good point. You know, oftentimes what New Yorkers will do, and not just New Yorkers, but people who live in the Northeast, they'll turn into snowbirds. And essentially what that means is they'll spend half the year, particularly in the summer and in the fall, in New York, but once the winter hits, you know, they'll head south. They'll go to the Carolinas and most popularly, I would say, South Florida, right? Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Palm Beach, Coconut Grove, things like that. I wouldn't consider myself a snowbird. <laughs> Many of you in the chat always say that. You're like, you're officially a snowbird now. I wouldn't say that. Just because I still spend time in New York in the winter. But yeah, today was a busy day. Um, we got a ton of economic data out. The Federal Reserve is speaking uh, today. We'll talk about what Fed Chair Jerome Powell said. And we also got the brand new existing home sales report for September. So there's going to be a lot, of, a lot to talk about tonight specifically hey atc's is hey tom and everybody it's good to catch this live well thank you so much appreciate it kevin lane's is boca raton as well yeah boca's nice boca raton florida is really nice you have mount sinai doctor's office here in sty town this is a community we very very seldom walk particularly during our live streams at night. We almost never come down here, mainly because it's very dark down here at night. That's true, Dan makes a good point. Dan says there's no place like New York City for the holidays. I agree. Hey, 
Sharon says, hey Tom, quickly saying hi, I'm on my way to class, but listening along. Good to see you, thanks for joining. Yeah, it's gonna be a short stream, but we're commuting back to the office here. Valor Abbott, what's up, Terrence? Says, it's crazy how it's already October. It's almost November. Today is October 19th. We're already halfway through the month of October, which is insanity, but it's true. Hey, NYC Cherry Groove, one of our first moderators ever on the channel. Good to see you and good afternoon. We are reporting live from Stytown. Trust you're well. Thanks for joining us. I kind of like this neighborhood. It's, it's, you know, I was about to say, it's really quiet. Uh, much of a juxtaposition from the jackhammering we just heard. But aside from the jackhammering, it's actually kind of quaint and quiet down here. So construction aside, it's actually very quiet. Hey, Stephanie is here, says you like Kipps Bay. It's also another good neighborhood. This place is very popular. There's always a lot of people here. Rosemary's. You have a lot of outdoor dining space here. Yeah, of course. Dan says, Tom, have you ever jogged in the city? I used to do tons of miles and miles and miles in the city, for sure. When I had my place on Central Park South, every single morning I would jog. But I love these low rise buildings down here with the fire escapes. I know, Melt is an outdoor dining space that's not a street shed. Yeah, they make it very nice. I feel like things are more open down here too. Does that kind of make sense? Particularly right here, it seems like the streets are a little bit wider. I feel like when I'm in Midtown Manhattan, everything feels so like condensed. I feel like everybody's breathing down my neck. At least down here, things are a little bit more, I would say relaxed, so to speak. Hey, Carol S, good to see you. All right, let's make our way further into the city. Since we have the light, we might as well cross. Hey, planes and palm trees. Hey, Tom, can't get used to seeing you during the daylight, I know. I'd say that's probably the biggest request we get on walks in Wall Street. People email me and say, we need number one, more daytime live streams. Number two, um, just an audio podcast about the financial markets because people say that they can't tune in for the full two hours, which I get, um, which is coming soon. We've migrated over to Substack, so all of the other newsletters that are going to be coming out, if you don't want to read it, uh, if you download the Substack app, you can just listen to the audio version. So from here on out, starting next Thursday. I like the look of this uh, graffiti on top of the deli, the Stye Grill in Delhi. Looks very in New York. Um, you'll be, well, anyway, so next Tuesday after the market closes, instead of, uh, you know, if you don't want to read it, you could listen to the audio version of the podcast. Sharon says, will you be using Patreon? No, I migrated from review to Substack. Now, if you remember correctly, I think this was 2021. I could be mistaken, it may have been 2020, but Twitter made an acquisition of Review, which is sort of like 
a newsletter and podcasting platform. Since Elon Musk bought Twitter, uh, they've discontinued review. And I think they've shut down the company, I think. I don't even think the company exists anymore. So I had to migrate the platform over to Substack. I was thinking about a couple other ones, but I think Substack is more inclusive of what I'm trying to do. And it has a good audio platform. Melds is, but will the newsletter be read in Tom's ASMR voice? Yeah, it'll just be my regular voice. I'll try to read it. I'll try to read it as, as best I can. For sure. Thank you, Meld, for the support. Hey, Alessandro is here from Italy. This is hello from Italy. I like your ASMR walking videos uh, and tour video voice, tour voice videos. Thank you, Alessandro. Appreciate it. I was actually on a call today with an investor from Italy whose name is Alessandro. I'm currently selling one of his buildings. Hey, LaFresh Sinatra says, what's up, Tom? Cheers from beautiful Tampa, Florida. Oof, I'm jealous. Now, although when I left Florida, supposedly there was a little bit of a cold front that moved in. Uh, Cherry Groove, yes. So I am on the Kirsten Jordan team at Douglas Element. So I work with KJ, Jill Purcell, and Stefano. And it's enjoyable, I like it. Learn a lot, getting a lot of good exposure to new developments. This is, uh, at first I thought these were condos. Apparently it's a school. Look at this. It says learnings, what does it say? Learning spring school. Maybe it's a school on the bottom and condos on top. I don't know. Looks interesting. Uh, Dan Sang, correct. Yes, Kirsten's husband is Italian. And he owns a small private equity shop, which I'm working as an analyst, helping uh, underwrite deals, etc. Just really fun. Hey, AUS Fly Girl, what's up? Says, hey Tom, thank you for the beautiful walks and education. I just downloaded the Substack app. I couldn't successfully scan your QR code. I think it's on my side. It may be on my side, actually. I've I'm just doing some beta testing. I don't even know if the Q, I think the QR code works some of the time. Uh, but it's probably on my side. I guess we could try it again. Let's see, Let's see if it'll work. Now the theory is if you, instead of clicking the link in the night bot, because usually at night the chats are <laughs> flying by so fast, I created this QR code. So if you scan it, it should bring you to the Substack link where you could punch in your email, but it's more than likely broken. So I'll have to go back and fix it. Um, but yeah, if you punch in your email every other Thursday, I write uh, a research piece. I love this building. I forget the name of it though. Uh, so it includes my full coverage on global equity markets, uh, fixed income and real estate. So if you scan that, you could read my latest piece, which I put out last Thursday. So this time next week, we'll have the other piece out, which is going to be all about uh, bank earnings, which we talked about. So JP Morgan Chase will do a deep dive as well as into Goldman Sachs, their earnings report and Bank of America. Now, if you tuned in the last night's live stream, we sort of talked about some of the main things that were of concern to me particularly in Bank of America and Goldman Sachs's uh, earnings call. If you remember Goldman Sachs, uh, they had their conference call early yesterday morning and they are 
cutting exposure and marking down quite severely their exposure to commercial real estate, like in a fire sale. And it kind of reminds me of a little bit like what happened leading up to the great financial crisis. When I was in college, I wrote a, uh, a piece on the GFC. And essentially one of the reasons why Goldman fared better than many of the other major banks is because they were first, one of the first ones to start removing these toxic assets off the balance sheet. So last quarter alone, Goldman Sachs marked down by 50% their exposure to commercial real estate, so much that an analyst uh, covering the stock from Bank of America said, you know, was asking uh, the CFO of Goldman Sachs, he said, wait, are you 100% sure? I just want some clarity here. You marked your book down by 50%. And the CFO of Goldman comes on the call and he's like, yeah, and we actually expect to be more aggressively in marking down that exposure, which is a little bit concerning, I guess, but also at the same time, it does make sense because we've been covering this, I mean, almost to the point of ad nauseum. I think commercial real estate is gonna take the biggest hit, um, you know, as you're talking about real estate in general, residential, commercial, you know, commercial office, I should say, probably is gonna take a, the biggest uh, blow. But you know what's good news in New York City? This is all brand new pavement here. And the city's actually been doing a really good job of, you know, making the roads a lot better, particularly down in the financial district. This is really nice, this is beautiful. They filled all the potholes, this is all brand new and they're gonna extend this all the way up to 34th Street. So the city's actually doing a really good job um, with fill filling a lot of the potholes and you know fixing some of our roads and putting in bike lanes. That's one of the things I'm really hoping that the city gets good at is putting in more bike lanes. All right, let me get the QR code out of the way. But yeah, if you scan the QR code, all if you miss the live streams, all of the stuff we talk about on the streams will be condensed into a research piece. So if you scan that, uh, punch in your email, you receive that every other Thursday at the closing bell. Somebody's talking about Scotiabank. Wendy England's Scotiabank is laying off 3% of their staff. Now, I don't know if that's, that seems like systematic in nature. I don't think that's necessarily a cause for concern or, or being an alarmist. Um, here in New York, actually in the, the building where the Nür Nürburger Berman is. I didn't know this up until two days ago, but apparently Morgan Stanley has a very small office in the Nürburger, Ber uh, Nürburger Berman building. And unfortunately, I think they were all let go. I think DM, one of our moderators confirmed that. Um, I think DM used to work at Morgan Stanley. Oh, look at this. So we are now running into Gramercy Park. This is such a beautiful neighborhood here. Doesn't it look totally different during the daytime than it does at night? I think during the nighttime, it doesn't really do the neighborhood justice. I love all the tree-lined streets here. Now the park is private. Gramercy Park is a private park. But as we walk the perimeter of the park, you'll notice a lot of the beautiful architecture of these buildings. I actually really like it. I think the Gramercy Park, sort of Gramercy North neighborhood is growing on me a little bit. I used to say that the Upper West Side of Manhattan uh, was my favorite, but I don't know. I actually kind of like Gramercy Park. Look at these big grand entrances. Look at that door, it's like a very heavy wood painted door and the outer trim is all marble. I'm not sure if you can make that out, but the outer trim of the door is big marble slabs. It's really nice. Yeah, May says it looks a little bit better in the daytime. I agree. And I think it's just because it's a very sparsely lit area, right? We usually do the live streams around Midtown Manhattan where there's 
you know, ample amounts of light. But in places like this, it's much better to tour these particular neighborhoods during the day. Look at the beautiful facade on this one with those shutters. That looks really nice. And it looks like a little bit of a cast iron balcony. Peter Webley's is the park is private property. Yeah, you are correct, Peter. I believe if you own a uh, property uh, bordering the perimeter of the park, you get a key to the park. Right as we come up to the corner of Irving Place here, and as we turn the camera a little bit over to the right, you'll see one of the main entrances. There's not a lot of people in the park. You could see some, but it's beautiful. I like it. Gorgeous, gorgeous place. Let's walk down this way. We'll do uh, we'll do one lap around the Gramercy Park neighborhood. But what do you guys think? Could you see yourself living here? I think I could. I think I could. Oh my gosh. So on the corner of East 19th Street, this is really stunning here. Look at this. The entire facade of the building is totally covered in this vine. Let's actually go across the street. You could probably see the detail a little bit better from across the street, but that is really magnificent to look at. This is on the corner of East 19th Street and Irving Place. You know, I actually have one of my listings on East 23rd Street. So about four blocks north of here, uh, a property called Gramercy North. So my boss, uh, Stefano, was the developer on that project and now we are selling it. If you wanna see a tour of that, I believe if you type exclamation point 23 in the chat, once again, exclamation point 23, you'll be able to see uh, a full property tour of Gramercy North, but look at that. What do you guys think of this building? It's beautiful. Particularly now with the leaves changing color, it looks really nice. melds is how often does the Gramercy Park property come available? I imagine li residents live there for a long time. Yeah, I mean, every so often. There's some listings in the neighborhood for sure. <laughs> ah, Michael Vosper. Yes, I see it. Yeah, everybody, unfortunately, which is very, very sad to say, one of our good friends, unfortunately, passed away, I believe, two weeks ago now, or about a, maybe about a month, Vinny Castellano. Great, great friend and viewer of the stream. Really good virtual friend of mine, uh, Vinny. Just a great guy, always loved to see him in the chat. I think he made the stream a lot better. So it's uh, definitely a tragic loss, but the good news is he's probably in a much better place than the wild and chaotic world we have going on now. And Michael, very sorry for your loss.
I don't think I've ever been to this place. Hey, Dwayne is here. What's up? This building is also really nice. I know, isn't that sad? It stinks. All right, we'll continue down to 18th Street and then we'll make a right. Look at this, I didn't know they opened this coffee shop here. This is Irving Farm, New York. Now my favorite location is on 79th Street uh, and Broadway, right off of the one train. But it looks like they just opened up a shop here, which I think fits really well with the neighborhood. You have this really nice exposed brick here. This is one of my favorite coffee shops in the city, but I haven't been to this one. I usually go to the one on 79th Street, right as you get off the one train. Hey, ETC, good to see you. Thanks for joining us on this very short uh, daytime stream. We're checking out the Gramercy Park neighborhood of New York City. I like this building. But if you're all enjoying this daytime live stream so far, feel free to leave a like on the video and click the subscribe button if you're new. We usually go live at 8.30. That's when our, I should say, flagship live show is. But I'm gonna try to do more daytime streams as much as I can when I don't have work. Oh, Monday.com has an office right here. I didn't know that. So Monday.com is a software company. I believe it's traded under the ticker symbol MDNY, Monday.com. So they're like an HRS software, sort of like human resource software. So think about Workday. I'm sure many of you have heard of the software company Workday. They're also publicly traded under the ticker symbol WDAY. Ah, ETC, this is Tom, I'm using Monday as we speak. I love the software. I think we use it too at the Kirsten Jordan team. That's what I use for my onboarding, but yeah, so Monday, Monday.com, I believe you know how I can explain Monday.com a little bit? So if you think about the leader in CRM, so customer relationship management software, that would be Salesforce, right? That trades under the ticker symbol CRM. But there's a lot of other competitors to Salesforce, particularly like a Zoho, which is a lower cost option. I would say Monday.com is like a lower cost option of Workday. So more startups use it, things like that. Ah, Michael Vosper, I appreciate that. I still can't believe it. It's uh, such, such unfortunate news. Hey, Teresa Diaz, what's up? Uh, Ibanez, is any advice for mid-level QA engineers? Well, what is your uh, what is your end goal? I would say this is a really nice sort of like indoor outdoor restaurant. Eleven to seven p.m. 
Let's see what they got. Half dozen oysters for 17 bucks. Well, we are on Park Avenue. Yeah, ETCs is one that is great for startups and small businesses. I agree. You know, Zoho, it's not publicly traded, but when I went from working at a, a big, big tech and telecom company to a smaller startup, uh, we use Zoho because it's a lot less expensive than Salesforce. Salesforce is extremely, extremely expensive, right? But it's a premium product, premium software. So I guess it makes sense. And they also have a lot more plugins, right? A lot more API integration, more seamless, more support. But if you're a startup with only, you know, eight to 10, even 50 employees, you don't really need all that stuff. Ah, eventually I want to become a test lead or a tech lead, maybe you mean. Move to product management. So you want to be like a PM at Meta or something like that? You know, there's a really good... Um, have you heard of Lenny's newsletter? I think that's what it's called. So this guy, Lenny, he used to be a PM at Airbnb and he was really, really successful. And now he, I think he has like an education company that teaches or that helps startup founders or help, helps engineers, really anybody, get into those lead PM roles at big tech companies like Meta, Airbnb and the like. Um, he also has a podcast that's free. I think his newsletter is paid, but the podcast is free. So if you type in Lenny's podcast, Product Management, um, he has tons of great information. And he has you know, top PMs at Microsoft, Meta, all these big tech companies on. And they're like an hour, two hour long podcasts. I would check that out. I was on the sales side, so not a engineering side. So direct advice for me, it's probably not gonna be too applicable because I did the route of, you know, small to medium business size sales, then mid market and then enterprise sales. So selling to Fortune 500, Fortune 50, not really on the engineering side or the management side. Let's uh, go down here. But Zaman, I don't know. Let me know if uh, that works. If you pull up another tab, go to YouTube uh, and just type in Lenny's podcast PM. It should pop up. If not, I'll send you an email uh, and get you all the info you need. Oh, Paul Little, I think you're right. I think you're correct. Yeah. Where is that, Paul? Is that super far upstate? I don't think that's like really, really far upstate. Ooh, look at the architecture on this building. 121 East 22nd Street. Here, let's cross, I'll show it to you. Ah, it was yesterday. So we had the uh, event yesterday in Brooklyn at the Conover, 199 Conover Street. It was a really good event. I thought it was very, very successful. What do you guys think of the architecture on this building? 
this looks like brand new development 121 east 22nd street and this sort of garage door this looks like a garage door opener so they probably have private parking in the building yeah marcy m says the windows are cool now you know what's even cooler so i have a new listing that's going to be coming on the market very very soon in tribeca very very soon um the building is five franklin place and i'm going to be listing unit 8a and the building has the most futuristic looking private parking i've ever seen sort of like a car elevator that takes you down about a story down underground it's really yeah. really cool place so if you're looking for a three bedroom apartment in tribeca it's three bedrooms three and a half bathrooms uh, I got something that's off market, but we're probably looking to list it just before Thanksgiving. And it has private parking in the building. Hey, Janice S., good to see you. Oh, this is uh, Baruch College. This is Lexington Avenue and East 23rd Street. Now, if you see this building right across the street, this one with these square sort of rectangle windows that go all the way down, that's the building I'm selling. Well, I'm selling individual units in the building. We're almost sold out. We have unit number two. We just sold unit number seven, but we have two, 12 and 14. 14, I didn't list 14 yet, but uh, if you're looking for a two bedroom, two bathroom, just north of Gramercy Park, right on 23rd Street, views of the Chrysler Building, right on Baruch College, check it out. If you type exclamation point 23 in the chat, you could see a full property tour of all the units in the building. It's nice, you have floor to ceiling glass windows, it gets a lot of natural light. And the unit on the second floor has about 580 square feet of outdoor space that's exclusive to you. It's a cool building. Interesting project. Cool views of the Chrysler building from the street. But let's walk towards Madison Square Park. Now, when we get to Madison Square Park, there's gonna be a little bit of unfortunate news because there's this mega tall building that's going to go up. Well, it's almost complete. They're almost topping it off and it's going to block the entire view of the Empire State Building, unfortunately, so. Oh, is that right? Cool. Somebody says they're getting new windows in their house. I always have people try to pitch that to me at my place in South Florida. But here's the thing. I have the original windows from the 1950s in my house. And they keep trying to pitch me on the hurricane impact windows. And they're like, it's gonna be a lot safer and they're gonna hold up to withstand a hurricane. To which I say, well, so do mine. Mine are the original windows from 1950 and they've been through every single hurricane, almost a hundred years. And they're fully intact. I think it's because things were built a lot better back then. Higher quality, I don't know. And I think the whole package they quoted me is like 23 grand to do it. Yeah, maybe my insurance would go down like $100 a year. But, you know, amortize that cost over 20 years. The payback is really not worth it right now.
Eric's is Tom, what is going to happen to the Flatiron building? Well, they're supposedly going to make it hotels. It's going to be like hotel and residences. I don't know that how that'll sell. I mean, the floor plans are going to be very wonky, I would assume. I mean, just look at the just look at the building, right? It's a beautiful building, right? It's a landmark, but it's very narrow. So I don't know how that's going to work for apartments or a hotel. We'll see. I think some people would probably be drawn to it um, because of just the iconic Flatiron building, just to say, hey, I own a place in the Flatiron building. Maybe somebody would buy it, but I don't know. I'll have to see the finished project. I don't even think they started to do the conversion yet. But I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity in this city, a lot, uh, particularly as it relates to commercial office. You're going to see a massive wave of foreclosures, and I think valuations are going to decrease substantially, and I think that's going to provide a lot of opportunity for investors, hopefully such as myself. Um, to buy really good properties for 30 to 50% off, right? Put a little bit of work into it and then put it back on the market. The problem is a lot of the owners of these commercial buildings, particularly office and retail, the problem is they have a lot of debt on it and that debt is set to roll over. Now, when the debt rolls over, well, guess what? Interest rates are no longer 2%. Um, if you want to talk about residential, just for comparison, yesterday the average 30-year fixed rate mortgage hit 8% for the first time in over a decade. So when a lot of that debt rolls over for this commercial paper, well, guess what? You have an environment, particularly in New York City, where vacancies are at almost all-time highs for commercial office, but your expenditures are going to explode. So a lot of those deals will probably go back to the banks. They'll go into foreclosure auction and that's going to be amazing opportunity. And I think the city is gonna get a lot of new product. This is a really good view of one Vanderbilt and the Empire State Building. But this is the new building that's gonna block the view of the empire. You'll see what I'm talking about as we reach the end of the street here. Wow, Eric says, Tom, we bought a rental condo one and a half years ago for 2.99. Oh, is that your rate? So under three, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of crazy. And you know, I talked about this in my last research piece. Uh, asset class is correct in order of liquidity. Right? So equities, since they're very, very liquid products, uh, they tend to adjust in valuation very, very rapidly for a higher interest rate environment. However, real estate is very illiquid in comparison to equities, stocks, and the like. So it takes about a year, year and a half for those rate hikes to really move its way through the economy and impact valuations. And that's why one of the things we're going to talk about tonight on our live stream is the existing home sales data we just got out. And again, existing home sales declined and you actually saw valuations decline for the first time. And that's usually what happens. So if you want to read that research piece, sort of where I outline and detail it, if you scan the QR code on your screen, punch in your email, you could read it for free. And every other Thursday after the market closes, uh, I'll send you all of my research for free. But guys, this is a travesty. This used to be a clear view of the Empire State Building right here from East 23rd Street and Broadway. You have all of these beautiful chairs, outdoor dining space, people enjoying coffee. And you used to be able to enjoy an unobstructed view of the Empire State Building, but guess what? 
This building is going to be an ultra luxury, super tall high rise that is going to block the entirety of the Empire State. But look at this dachshund here. It's almost like a dachshund kind of, uh, what was I gonna say? A dachshund mix with a golden retriever. Doesn't it? Look at that. Ten out of ten for this dachshund. That's absolutely gorgeous dog. Sorry, a little bit distracted. But yeah, imagine how that looked. If you go back to some of our live streams last year, you could see the unobstructed view. Look, I still think it's a nice place to come, you know, on your break at work or something like that and hang out. But it is kind of unfortunate, I'm not gonna lie. It's a little unfortunate that it's going to be totally blocked. But I guess another argument is now we have more supply in the city. I don't know, let's take a little bit of a poll in the chat. Do you guys, are you guys for or against the brand new apartment going up? I think I'm for it even though I'm against it. And I know that sounds like I'm contradicting myself, but listen, the city does need more supply of housing. And due to really horrible and corrupt city politics, uh, particularly as it surrounds, essentially what it is is price fixing, in my view. I should say rent stabilization, rent stabilized buildings. The only way to get new product is to build new product. Yeah, everybody says against, and I, and I get that. I'm kind of against it, but it's like, look, you gotta do what you gotta do to build product. There's actually, I think it's almost up to 90,000 uh, vacant apartments in the city. Not a lot of people know that, but the reason why there's so many vacant apartments is because Landlords don't want to spend the money to invest into those units to get the buildings ready for rent. And the reason why they won't do that is because they're not allowed to bring the value of the rents up to market rent. So they would never make their money back. So they would rather just have their product sit empty due to all of those rent stabilization laws, which kind of stinks. This is Italy here. Very famous Italian grocery store. And this is the Flatiron building that is going to be turned into hotel and condominium. It is a beautiful building. I hope they're gonna restore the facade and make it look even better. But since it's such a narrow floor plan and layout i don't know i don't really know how it's going to turn out i don't know how it's going to look i guess we'll see we'll find out all right let's get back on broadway and head uptown i got to go all the way to 59th street or excuse me 57th street let's do that but to our right is madison square park Hey, Marty is here. What's up? This is market value rents are so high. Yeah, that's true. But you also have to take into consideration, you know, the basic law of supply and demand, right? So assuming if these landlords can make money and get these units rent ready, you would have a lot more supply on the market. So you wouldn't have all these crazy and insanity bidding wars going on for rentals. So the more supply you bring on the market, the more that sati uh, satiates the demand, right? 
but if you just have you know too few product and too few good product well you're always going to have this situation where you know rents are going to be stratospheric although if i had to make a prediction and i wrote about this in my last piece uh you are going to see softening and we already are starting to see softening in the the housing market uh shelter costs are usually the last to roll over in a business cycle and you're going to start to see that now right um you know a 30-year fixed rate mortgage is eight percent so that price is pretty much the vast majority of non-cash buyers out of the market right so valuations need to adjust for a higher interest rate environment if you want to see deal flow pick up we'll talk about that tonight because the national association of realtors they just released their existing home sales report for September. So we're going to do a deep dive into that tonight. What do you guys think about the Madison Square Park neighborhood? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Hey, running at altitudes is Tom. I'm enjoying the daytime streams. Nice to see the architecture, the buildings, and the light. I agree. That was one of my main thoughts about doing the daytime streams. Obviously, I've been getting a lot of requests for that. So I'm going to try to do a little bit better with my scheduling. If I have like a two-hour you know, break in between work or showings or something like that, I'll quickly pop on the stream on my way back to the office, and hopefully we can get some good footage of the city in. Eric this is Tom you should move there I don't know I don't know if I'd want to move here I kind of like the Upper West Side although Gramercy Park particularly after today's live stream yeah, is growing on me quite a bit hey fascinating thanks for joining us All right, I'll give the city of New York another compliment. You guys ready? I love how the city is making the city more pedestrian friendly and cyclist friendly. Would you guys agree? Broadway is a perfect example from that or of that. So from 32nd Street, Koreatown, all the way down to East 22nd or 23rd Street, excuse me. Uh, there's no vehicle traffic, as you'll notice. Half of it is outdoor dining space for some of the restaurants, as well as public seating area, and then your dedicated bike lane headed north and southbound, which I think is really nice. It kind of makes the city a little bit more safe for walkers, and it gives it a little bit of a European vibe and flair. Would you agree with that or disagree with that? What do you guys think? Would you want to see the city of New York doing more of what you see here? More dedicated outdoor space, more pedestrian friendly, more bike lanes? Or do you think this is a little bit too inconvenient for all of our motor vehicle drivers? Let me know in the chat. I like it. I think it looks good. Hey, the ABX girl. Good to see you. I agree. I like Cash Jordan a lot. I think he's a very good interlocutor. I think he's a good storyteller. And I think that's important for any, not only good salesperson, but I think a good host is to be very is a good storyteller in general very clear direct and concise easy to follow easy to understand and i think that's what he brings about i do enjoy it quite well hey anthony williams is here what's up anthony welcome to new york city during the day now i remember during the 
good. I remember during the pandemic, all of these stores that you see here, it was all shuttered, it was all vacant. And now it seems like it's made a full recovery. Almost every single retail storefront is totally filled, which is really nice. Does anybody remember that in like 2021, as we would walk down Broadway, we would actually skateboard down Broadway. It was a ghost town. All of the retail was vacant and I'm not even exaggerating. Quite literally, almost all of the retail was totally blown out and vacant. Now it's, everything's packed. There's a burger place here. There's a barber shop. This place is Nomad Girl. I don't know what that is. Uh, this is Broadway Plaza and Hotel, a Mexican restaurant. And I think the Smith is over here too. This place is actually really good, guys. I tried this the other day. It's called Cha Cha Matcha. Is anybody a fan of matcha? I wasn't up until a couple of years, up until like a year ago. It's actually really good. I like it iced. I don't like hot matcha. I like iced matcha a lot better. Uh, ATC says, Tom, could you read comment about the bench in Central Park? Uh, yes, where is that? Ah, Michael Vosper says, Tom, can I buy Vinny, Vinny a bench outside Wall Street? Wow, I don't know if you can buy it. I don't know if you can buy benches on Wall Street, but you can buy them in Central Park. I was thinking about buying a bench and making it the walks in Wall Street bench, but yeah, if you send me an email, maybe we'll do something together. Maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll buy it. But yeah, I think that's a good idea. And I believe the uh, purchase price for the bench goes towards the Central Park Conservatory. Hey, Al Baker, what's up? Good to see you. This place is like a ice cream bar, but it's liquor infused or liqueur, however you say it. And all of this used to be vacant. I wish I could play the videos side by side, but during the pandemic, all of this was totally, totally vacant. You have an interesting ice cream bar that's alcoholic. Uh, you have a barber shop, which looks very nice, very unique. Then you have Joe and the Jews. I'm not a big fan of Joe and the Jews, actually. Hey, Al Baker is here. Says, hello, Tom. Good to see you, Al. Good afternoon. Yeah, Jeff, I'll let you know about the bench. I was going to buy it, um, I think, in a good location. I really want to get it close as possible to 59th Street. Um, I think it's like 10 grand. Um, so I'll keep you posted if I'm gonna do that. But I think it'd be cool, right? Anybody who watches Walks in Wall Street from all over the world, you could visit the Walks in Wall Street bench and we'll dedicate it to something. You could sit there and think of great business opportunities. How about that? On the corner of West 29th Street and Broadway. I'm not sure the name of the building, everybody, but I mean, look at how gorgeous the architecture looks. And the backdrop, you have the Empire State Building. Looks stunning. Hey, Nicholas, how are you? I'm doing really good. Thank you for asking. I hope you're doing well. Sabrina Fair, welcome to New York City during the day. Sabrina, we were down, well, we started, I should say we started the stream. Let me turn on the wide angle camera lens. We started in Stytown 
on the East River. Wow, that is a beautiful shot. Very unique architecture. I think that's a cast iron facade too. Very reminiscent of our walks down in Soho. Soho is the main district in New York City where they have these cast iron facades. Can we do a quick time check in the chat? I just want to make sure I'm running on time here. Feels like they've added much more city bikes. Ooh, 5 p.m. All right, I got, I got to be at the office at 5.30. So we're doing good on time. Central markets while discussing Valor rabbits as you're freezing. Not really. It's actually kind of nice. I got a jacket on. It's definitely nothing like Miami where it's 88 degrees and sunny every day. But I wouldn't say I'm freezing. All right, now the foot traffic is gonna pick up a lot. This is right by Koreatown, 32nd Street, Korea Way. Square. Hey, Mr. Bagman, I know, crazy. The 10 years now, 5%. We're gonna talk about that tonight. We had a lot of stuff to talk about. You know, it's kind of sad, our debt is trading like, <laughs> I don't wanna say it, but yeah. Now the 10 years, 5%. I think it's going higher, which means this 8% 30-year mortgage rate we have is also probably going to go higher. I wouldn't be surprised if we see an 8, 8.5% 30-year fixed, 8, and a, eight and a quarter to 8.5 by the end of the year. I would not be surprised at all. I think this is the first time I've actually seen anybody using the ping pong tables here. Oh, I thought that was gonna come right for me. Damn. Wow, they're good. Nice. Pretty good. Now you're not gonna win. Usually they play this at Bryan Park. Whoops, everybody, I gotta run. Gotta run, getting an important phone call. Uh, I'll see you guys tonight at 8.30, okay? Take care. Uh, if you enjoyed the stream today, leave a like on the video, click the subscribe button if you're new, if you wanna sign up for our free financial newsletter that we will put out every other Thursday after the market closes. Scan the QR code 
punch in your email and you will receive all of our equity research for free. But I gotta run. Take care everybody and we will see you tonight at 8.30.